I have a need to lay out some odd angles very precisely and accurately. In my case, those angles are 6.7 degrees, 1.4 degrees, and 4.8 degrees. And there's no way that I can measure that degree of precision off an ordinary protractor. But fortunately, there is a traditional, easy, low-tech way of getting angles to that degree of precision. Welcome to Workshop Essentials. This is a sign bar. Now, if you're an engineer, you'll probably be looking at this and thinking, blimey, Steve, that's a big one. And indeed it is. It's 10 inches from the center of this anvil to the center of this anvil. I could have made it smaller, but the bigger it is, the more accurate it will be. And multiplying numbers by 10 is very easy. So that's why I'm working in inches and it's 10 inches from there to there. By using a very precisely made spacer, I can set the angle of this very accurately. So this one is 0.84 inches long. And if I put it underneath one end like that, that gives me 4.8 degrees. And I know now that that slope is accurately 4.8 degrees. And if I swap it for a slightly bigger one, this will give me 6.7 degrees. And if I go much bigger, uh, this one is five inches, and this will actually give me 30 degrees, like that. So how do we make a sign bar? Well, I started with a piece of maple a bit longer than I needed, so I've got something to get hold of. And I machined it up. And then I drilled two holes exactly 10 inches apart. How do you do that? Well, I made a spacer exactly 10 inches long. Now, my digital calipers only go up to six inches. You can get them that go up to eight inches for not very much more money. And you can get them which go up to 12 inches, but it tends to get a bit spendy then. So I simply did this by eye. I got my best ruler and my best glasses, and I got it to 10 inches as finely as I can possibly measure by eye, simply by starting off a little bit too big and shooting the end until it looked right. Right, well, looking at this, I have got to take off about a 32nd of an inch in length. So I'm going to do that with my shooting board. Nearly. Let's try one more pass. I think that will do very nicely, thank you. 10 inches. Then using this 10 inch spacer, I put a 20 millimeter drill in my drill press, set a stop and put my piece of maple against the stop and drill the hole. And then inserted the 10 inch spacer to drill the second hole. So the two holes were now exactly 10 inches apart. These brass cylinders or anvils are 20 millimetres in diameter and 20 millimetres long. They were made for me by my friend Stuart, one of the last jobs he did before he died. You are sorely missed, my friend. Then there was a little bit of work to do on the bandsaw. It needs to have some relief space here so that you've got space to put a piece of wood in there. And there needs to be a little bit of relief behind the heel of this back one as well. So that was done on the bandsaw. The curved bit was done by hand because I've got a quite a wide blade set up on my bandsaw at the moment. And it was all cleaned up. And the whole thing took me an hour, if that. So very easy to make. I'll just stop this sticking to my bench, I think. It'd be a good idea, wouldn't it, Steve? I'm using an epoxy adhesive to glue the anvils into the holes. 
There we go. The final bit is absolutely crucial. And that is this edge here has to be trimmed on the table saw so that it's exactly parallel to this cotangent. Okay, it must be absolutely perfectly parallel to that. And I was really glad that I've got a, a good blade guard that covers the entire blade because to hold this against the fence, uh, I've got to get my hands closer to the blade than I would normally like. But because it covers it exactly, um, I, I felt fairly well protected, very well protected actually. Now I need to make my spacers. And whilst it's not easy to measure angles to one decimal place, it is easy to measure distances and to a greater precision than one decimal place as well. So when you were at school, were you one of the guys at the back of the class writing on the desk or were you paying attention? I hope it was the latter because we are going to use signs. Now, if you remember signs, signs are the displacement sideways as an angle is rotated. The greater the angle, the greater the sign. At zero, the sign is zero, and at 90 degrees, the angle is one unit length. And the, every, sign, every angle has a sign, and you can find them in a book like this. This is my Zeus book, Table of Natural Signs. Now, unfortunately, this gives me angles in degrees and minutes. 10 minutes, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 minutes. 60 minutes is one degree. And my SketchUp model gives me angles in decimal angles. I want 1.17. So I can either just interpolate or I can ask my favourite friend. <laughs> hey Google, what's the sign of 6.7 degrees? Sign. 6.7 degrees is 0 0.117. Hey Google, thank you very much. I'm honoured to serve. Hey Google, so you should be, you're only a robot. That may be true, but I have a heart of gold. <laughs> so armed with that data, I can cut my spacer very slightly oversized on my crosscut saw and then just shoot it until I get the reading that I want. So we'll set it to inches and that gives me three decimal places and uh, this needs to be 0.84 inches long. It's 0.835, that's close enough in my book. 835, 8355. Uh, and that will give me an angle of 4.8 degrees when it's underneath there like that. And I've got spacers. This, is, this one gives me 6.7. This one gives me five, that's uh, five inches. That gives me 30 degrees. Now there is a limitation with this in that my uh, digital vernier only goes up to uh, 150 millimeters or six inches. So if I want more than that, let's say I want to set to use it to reach 45 degrees. Well, that's um, 0.707. The sign of 45 is 0.707. So that means my spacer needs to be 7.07 .07 inches long, and this only goes to six. So this is what we do. We temporarily stick on an extra bit and shoot the end square so that the two are dead flush. If I close my eyes, I can't feel the join there. And then I can measure, let's just make sure it's zeroed. I can measure that. So that is, 3.65 and this is 3.44 which makes 7.09 and we want 7.07 .07. so I haven't got to take very much off that to get that to the right length absolutely <laughs> absolutely perfect absolutely perfect and then I could just take off this extra bit it's only stuck on with double-sided tape and I've got uh, a spacer suitable for doing 45 degrees so how do we use this in the workshop in anger 
Well, there are two common scenarios in my workshop, and one of them is on the table saw, and the other is to set a sliding bevel like this. Let's go over to the saw. If I want to set my miter fence, I can do that with my sign bar. I need some folding wedges. These just go together and lock in the miter track like that. And I can put a roofing square up against them like that so that it's dead square across my table saw. Then I set my sign bar up against that. It is helpful if you've got three hands, but if you haven't, you just have to be careful. And then I can just set my fence against the sign bar like that. And that is set at 30 degrees as accurately as you could possibly want it. And of course, one of the really great things about this is if I'm doing handed parts, I can simply turn that over like that, and I've got my fence set at 30 degrees in the opposite direction. Again, perfectly three-handedly <laughs> accurately. Like that. Perfect. To set a sliding bevel, I'm going to use my shooting board. And this is a Tim Russo design. You'll find it on the fine woodworking videos. It's excellent. I thoroughly recommend it. And of course, it has to be square. It's not much of a shooting board if it's not square. So this spacer gives me 6.7 degrees. Like that. And then and just set my sliding bevel. And that is now 6.7 degrees off square. And that's now set to 6.7 degrees. So if you have a need for some very accurate and precise angles, I'd suggest you invest in one of these. It's fast, it's accurate, it's precise, and it's satisfying to do because we're, we're keeping traditional techniques alive. And it doesn't break the bank. That's all good in my book. Until the next time, cheerio.